I'm Spencer Knowledge Ferron uh, of Sky Sports Ring Size Toe to Toe Boxing Podcast and hashtag Toe to Toe. Um, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Lights Out. I'm Faisal Khan outside Peacock Gym and I'm joined by James Branch. James. How are we? All right. Good. Good. Yourself? Yeah, not bad. Thank Hair's you. on point, legs are out, guns are out. Enjoy the weather. Tan, little tan, a bit away, went away after a box. Yeah. Went away a couple of weeks holiday and that got myself a little tan. So Where did you I'll go? Show it off. I went, to, um, I went to Rhodes in Greece. What did you buy me? But I, uh, got you a, I got you a little magnet, but I left it at home. I got you a little fridge magnet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a free ticket to your next one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about June 23rd. Your yep. first pro fight, the one on points. How would you assess your performance? Um, for me, that's nothing on what I can normally do. I know that, but I, but I was pleased with it. I was pleased with it because it was very, very different. Uh, boxing live on live on telly, my mm. professional debut, which is really quite unheard of. You know, not many people get to make their professional debut live on telly. Yeah. And then all at all the pressure, but a lot of there was a lot of build up few months, a good few months of build up for me for it, mm-hmm. a lot of people talking about it and stuff, so yeah, and, and, and the biggest thing was it was so different just having like, a camera shoved in your face to, yeah. to in the change room, I got a camera in my face, do this, do that, mm-hmm. I wasn't used to that, you know, I'm not, I'm used to just doing my own little thing in the amateurs and going out and just fighting, you know, mm-hmm. so it was, it was very different, it was, I, I, I was pleased with it because it was a massive learning process and that's what I, and that's what I need. Yeah. Going into the pros, but learning and uh, it's different, you know. Things are, things are different. Do you know when I when I look when I watch um, pro debuts, obviously a lot of people are like, yeah, you want to see a knockout, you want to see something. The way I see it is, is that just get the job done. So overall, you got to look back at that and think, you know, I won my first fight. It's a learning curve. Of course. Move on now. A lot of people look at like, knockouts as a um, as a big thing mm-hmm. because that's part of. Boxing yeah. as a pro is that I've learned it's a more of a business, uh, more of a business is entertainment. You know, like people are not really interested in so much in the sport factor, but people just want to see yeah. people get hurt. But what I'm saying is, if you can, if you, if you bring other aspects to other aspects to the table, such as I'm more of an entertainer, I'm going to be more of an entertaining type of fighter. You know, what I mean, I'm the, I probably never will be a, a knockout art. Uh, I, I will, mm-hmm. but just. My style, I'm more flashy, hands down. If I'm breaking them up, I'll, I will, I'm more, I'm more look flashy than try and kill them. Do you know what I mean? But obviously over time and that, that will change and I'll be learning and stuff. But um, the, knocking people out ain't, ain't the, um, ain't it's not the be all and end all. Not the be all end all. Not be all end all. Of course, that's it. What was it like for you stepping out in front of your training, in front of your friends? Yeah, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. I, lo- I loved it. Like, it was it, for me. It was um, it was it was like a it, it was a, it was an amazing experience. I'm not used to like coming out coming out and I could hear everyone singing and everyone chanting for me. It was just like it was it was it was amazing. Like you watch it on the telly, everyone they're, they're all singing your name. And like I've grown up since I was eight years old watching it on the telly, and it was like a dream, you know. Like mm. and then I walked out the change room and I'm down the tunnel. At the O2, like that was one that I massive thing, and I can hear everyone screaming my name. There's and only one like, James Branch is what they were singing. Yeah, up. yeah. I mean, obviously, I was excited for you because I remember when we first uh, sat down in um, in Islington for the Dubois, yeah, yeah, uh, for Tom Little, and I remember you telling me how yeah. excited you was. Obviously, there's a cancellation yeah. due to an injury yeah. for the show. Yeah. But you was no, you look good. You put up a, a, a very good performance. You got the job done. Yeah. Onto the second fight. Um, what have you learned from that experience? It was your debut well, experience. Um, as I say, not, but boxing wise, probably not a lot. Te- technically, my bo- boxing wise, my skill, m- my skill level is, is very, very high. It's more, it's more to do now with experience, you no know, experience and stuff under the camera, under the lights, under the big stage, performing now in front of. I used to, I used to be performing in, in like a, a little, like a school hall somewhere or something. But they're now performing on, on the big stage at the O2. In front of lots of people, my friends there, family, all friends and all family there, and all and and thousands of thousands of people coming to watch a night of boxing, mm. you know. So yeah, it's more about learning how to to, to cope and, and handle it with that pressure. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. I like that. I like that pressure. I like I like to entertain people and that, you know. Looking back on the fight, what do you think you could have done slightly better? Well, that's slightly better. Um, 
rushed. I was uh, obviously uh, I had box. Was there was was there at any point you were thinking knockout? I can knock this guy out. Did you, yeah, of course. Cool. When I was hitting with a couple, of, when I was hitting with a couple of body shots. But I tell you the truth, I, I a lot of people see that man there. He was a strong fella. He took a lot. I hit him a lot of body shots and that, and inspiring and that, and and training. People don't take people don't. Oh, I haven't been able to take that much. Yeah, that man was a durable man. I've got to take. I've got. I, I take my hat off to him. He took a lot. Of, he took a lot of shots, and I was thinking to myself, he's going to go. I was thinking to myself, he's going to go, but he didn't. He didn't. But anyway, is what it is. Yeah. Moving on from the fight, it's been obviously a couple of weeks. You've been on holiday. Has training been going? And um, when can we obviously expect to see you in the ring next? Yeah, I think they're expecting to see me back in the ring in September. I can't really. I don't. I don't really know too. Much. I don't really know full details yet, so I can't say something, but mid-September I should be fine again. Yeah, was, have you spoken to Frank? Has he yeah. know, spoken about yeah. the fight? Yeah, I've not spoken to him about I'm not spoken to him about the fight. I see him after the fight briefly and he said back out, he said I have a little rest and that and you're fighting again in September. Mm -hmm. um, but that's 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 been, not really been it, really. I've, I've, my trainer, uh, my trainers were happy, all my trainers were happy, everyone, everyone was happy with it. It, was, it, looked, it looked well, you know I mean, I yeah. come across well, so. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pleased with it. But and the next one, then I'm um, starting training again. I'll be back in here full time next week from Monday. Yeah, September. There's been obviously, you know, the camp itself. You know, going to your first ever weigh-in. You know, the fight itself. And obviously now after the fight, are you, are you happy with everything is right now? Is everything like slotting into place? Is it starting yeah, sinking now? You're yeah, pros? everything's everything's falling into place now. It all seems. Uh, I think for this new now, I'm gonna. I'm gonna this camp coming up there now, I'm, I'm used to it. I've done it before now. That's the big thing. It's the, the, the most nerve-wracking thing is doing it. It's like anything, doing anything for the first time. It's like going to start a new job mm -hmm. somewhere for the first day. You're nervous. You don't know, you don't know what's going to be. It was the same with going to the weigh-ins, going, going to the fights. To, uh, do you know what I mean? It was, it was, it was all quite all different. But I know what I, I know what I'm expect. I know what to expect now. I know what's expected of me. Mm -hmm. And. It's about doing it now, just going and, and just going and do the job. How many fights are, are you expecting to have in uh, 2018? I want to have two more, three more. Yeah. I reckon realistically, probably be two more. I reckon September. Mm. Maybe. Maybe November, December. November, December. Well, yeah, yeah, should be. Yeah, two, definitely two more. Minimum two more. Is there anyone out there in particular that you'd love to fight? I know, obviously, you've had your first fight, but you know, you must think to yourself sometimes because obviously you know the. Cruiserweight division a lot better than me, of course. Yep. I mean, you watch a lot of boxing. I take watch it. Watch a lot of boxing. Yeah, watch Is a lot of boxing. Is there anyone out there in particular you'd like to think? You know, I'd like to have a crack at him. No, I'll be honest with you. Honestly, honest to God, no. But I'll tell you why. Because I know what I can do with myself. Mm -hmm. I've done it so many years through the amateurs. I've competed at the best, the, the, the highest level. There ain't. I don't look at these these people as. A lot of these people as threats. I'm my biggest threat. If I go and perform, I can I can go as far. You can do bits. I can do it all. Mm. You know what I mean, I can go as far as I can go to the top. I know I can go to the top. So I don't look at people then individually targeting people because it's all a journey. Things change. Mm. Someone could be that champion. They could vacate it tomorrow and go and do this. You know. So I don't target anyone. Just who's in front of me at the time. I, they will be my target then to beat them. You know. Like I said, the cruiserweight division is an exciting division, especially for young fighters such as yourself, Lawrence Akoli, Isaac Chamberlain, Jordan Thompson, a good fighter from Manchester that I spoke to before. What do you think the future holds for the cruiserweight division for the young fighters that I just mentioned? It's an exciting time, isn't it? It's exciting time. You know, it's a lot of talent coming through in the cruiserweight division. A lot of that, as you, as you mentioned, them fighters there. It's good fighters coming through. So, they're going to be... They're going to... That, that leads to one day they're going to be big domestic dust ups, aren't they? Yeah. They're going to be big domestic dust ups. Boxing, isn't it? It's great for British boxing. You think there now you've got them mentioned mentioned five or six people. Mm. That's, that's a lot of yeah. good nights ahead. They're exciting nights for British boxing, exciting nights for myself to watch it and be a part of it. I mean, and, and I'm excited to be a part yeah. of it all, you know? There's a big fight on on Saturday night uh, Alexander Usek against uh, Morat Gassiev. Who's oh, making the fight? He's classy. He's um, a lot of people. A lot of people sort of half um, criticise Gassiev 
Yeah. But what they don't realise is that usage to a, a cut above, he completely nullified anything that um, Dessier brought to the table, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, that, you, that usage is just um, is, is a league above everyone. Do you know, before that fight, I remember I watched a clip of Usyk. I watched a couple of clips of him. And a lot of people before that fight were tipping Dassyev to win that fight. And I thought to myself, watching them clips, like you can watch anyone on YouTube, they look good. Yeah. But watching them clips, I thought to myself, this guy's going to absolutely outbox Dassyev. Were you at all surprised the way he outboxed No, what, once again, once again, this is, this is what I've come to realise. This is what I say about power, knocking people out isn't everything. That's what I did. That's like this is a perfect example. So Gassiev there now, knocking people out, knocking people spark out, hitting them one punch, ending it, and everyone's then like, oh, this this man is going to destroy you. His boxing skills, you see, he stop people, but he ain't a big one punch hitter. His boxing skills are a different level, mm. so completely, and that just goes to show you can hit as hard as you want to hit. If you if you're hitting nothing. That's no good. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's about the boxing skills, and that. that's what a lot of people don't understand, and that's and that's the and that's what I want to bring to the table. You know, the skill, the skill factor, the the, the class, the element of if you're a big hitter, come you're gonna end up shadow boxing against me. Do you know what I mean? And that's and that's what I want to do as well. And that's and, that, and about Usyk, he's just completely. He had all the power in the world. Gassy, Gassy, stronger, but he couldn't hit him. And that's it. Do you know, as a, as a boxing fan. What would you want to see next from uh, Alexander Usyk? What's the one fight you want to see him in next? I'll, I'll, I'll help you out with that. I mean, there's that, obviously totally got Bellew. Bellew. You, you, call, you got Bellew. You got Bellew. I'd like to see him fight Bellew. That'd be a good fight. That would be a, so uh, for me, I'd like him to fight Bellew. But he, he can go up to heavyweight. He can go up to heavyweight. He's good enough. He's boxed Joe Joyce before. Did you watch the fight with Joe Joyce? I've not watched it. No. Yeah, boxed Joe Joyce. He beat Joe Joyce. Is in the, um, in the amateurs. In the amateurs. In the WSB. Okay. He's a good fighter, he can go up to heavyweight. I'd like to see him Bellew, I like I like Tony Bellew as well. I, yeah. I, I look up to Tony Bellew as as one uh, as an idol, you know, but um, yeah, I'd like to see him fight. If he was to, like to fight Bellew, obviously I know you just you just spoke highly of Tony Bellew and we all know what Usyk's about. He holds all four belts, he's won the W boxing series, the World Boxing Series tournament. So if you and obviously if you look at Tony Bellew, last two fights he's beaten a guy that was not only cruiserweight world champion but heavyweight champion, David Hay. So Tony Bellew is no pushover. Tony Bellew is at the top Tony of his Bell game right now. Wow. If you put them two in the ring, what do you think the outcome would be? I think I hate to say it, but I do think you see the beat. I do think you see the beat, but depending on weight, it depends on what weight as well. I mean, if it's at heavyweight, then I think um, Bellew's got a little bit of experience as a heavyweight. Oh, he was a big man. I don't know, I just think... I don't even think it'd be a knockout. I reckon it'd be a point. I think... I think... I think you see the beat very your points. Do you think... If it happens at Cruiserweight, you set the win? Yeah. I don't know. I think he'd probably... I think it'd be closer at heavyweight. I think Bell, you'd be better on fighting him at heavyweight. But I think if, it, if, they, boxed at, if they boxed at Cruiserweight, I think it'd be more comfortable. You see. I was a trainer at Peacock Gym. Um, I remember I come down here a couple of months ago, spoke to Tunde and Anthony, and I was, I was, I was in like, I was like, wow, looking at some of the photos, of some of the people that've been here, you know, Mayweather's been here, Frank Bruno's been here, Jerome McLennan's been here. What does it mean to you training at Peacock Gym? And you know, what's it's, the meaning behind the Peacock Gym? It's, it's massive history in that gym. So it's an unbelievable gym. You know what our fans, when I turned when I turned professional, I wanted a gym. Like I trained down the reptiles, like it's very much as an amateur, it's very much like a family gym in yeah. the amateurs, you know. And what I found is, that, well, you go to a lot of other gyms and they ain't really got that type of feel. But down here, Martin and Tony, like we're all one down here. Mm -hmm. Everyone down to where whatever they're doing, where people are training, working behind the canteen, on the reception, we're all like. Everyone's like a family, is, you know, is, everyone's, yeah. everyone's well behind each other, everyone doing, anyone will do anything for, for one another. And that is, I think, that's a, I think that is a massive thing, that's a massive part of the gym. And yeah. I think why it's probably brought a lot of success as well, because everyone's pushing each other on, everyone wants to see everyone do well. And um, yeah, there's some, been some 
world class names come out of this gym. There's a big fight at the O2 Arena this weekend in the heavyweight division. We've got Dylan White taking on Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker. What do you think? Look, realistically, it's a 50 50 fight. Yeah. Obviously, you've had Dillian White who's at a good stage in his career, and you've had Joseph Parker coming back after getting beaten by Anthony Joshua. So, you look at that fight, put him in the ring. Both of them know if they can get the victory on Saturday night, it's a potential chance to get the world title. Joseph White back up there, didn't Who do you think wins on Saturday night? I think Dillian White's going to beat him. I do think Dylan White's going to beat him. I think Dillian White, he's, um, he's like a bit of a. <sighs> he's like. He's got the ball rolling at the minute. The ball is really has got the, the ball's rolling for him. He's he's in form. He's on form. He's just come out. That was a great win. Really, Lucas Brown weren't that fit, but it was a good win he got against him. Knocked him out. I think he done really. He done. He done really well against Lucas Brown, and I think he's got like, the hype going for him. And I think he's gonna. He's gonna. I think he's gonna uh, make the most of this opportunity. I do think he's gonna beat Joseph Parker, but he is a 50-50 fight. Yeah, he's not one. He's not an easy fight at all. Yeah. I just think on form, Parker's just been beat. I don't know, I think, I think White might do it. Yeah, obviously if you look at it, you know, he's just um, first fight to go the distance with Anthony Joshua. Didn't really get much on him, lost his world title. Do you think there's more pressure on Joseph Parker than there is Dylan White in this fight? Yeah, oh, there's massive pressure on it. Um, big pressure on White as well, because really, he did, he, White didn't really need this fight. Didn't really need to take this fight. It's mandatory. He, I think he's. I think he, if he boxed Pulev, he would have been mandatory for the WBA, wouldn't he? And I think he's already mandated. I think he's already number one for the WBC. So we didn't really actually need to take this fight. There is pressure on him, really, because if it all goes wrong, he's going to be. He's going to be kicking himself a little bit, isn't he? But um, that's a risk in boxing. You have to take. One. That, once again, that's a risk of boxing. That is, that is, that is a risk of boxing, and I, and I think it, I think it helped him. And, and he's got the confidence, and he believes in himself to take the fight. He, he completely believes. I think he believes he is. I think he believes he's the best heavyweight in the world. I think he, I like Dylan White. I've got, I've got a lot of respect for him. He's here fighting him, and, and that is, and you've got to take your hat off to that. Yeah, he's, he's obviously he's come from a, you know, his, his, back, his story. His, I don't know if you've obviously heard him do interviews in the past. You know, he come to London at a young age. Went without for many years, you know, become a dad at a young age. He's had one of them tough yeah. upbringings and he's, he's done well in boxing. And do, you, do you look at him right now? I mean, obviously, he come through a war against Chisora, he completely outboxed Lucas Brown. Do you think Dillian White is a guy that people need to look up to as an example, as a guy that's feared, fears no one, and as a guy that shows that if you work hard, no matter what your background is or what you've been through in life, yeah, you can achieve anything you want? I think you've really got to look, I'll look up to him, not even just through his boxing, just. He's come on leaps. You look at Dylan White versus Anthony Joshua, and you look at Dylan White now. Like two different. Look at the shape he's in there now. He's learning. He's he's, he's given his whole life to it. He's given his whole life to the sport, and you've got to look up to him. You've got to admire that. And he's really starting to reap the reward, the rewards from it now. You know, so he's probably got he's probably got himself a big payday from this fight against Parker. His his name's out there. He's become a he's, he's becoming a fan favourite now, and he, everyone likes. Everyone likes Dylan White, everyone likes to see him fight and that and I think everyone enjoys watching him fight as well. I think people enjoy his character as well, people enjoy watching his interviews and that because he is he is he is him, isn't he? Like he don't pretend he's someone else with the interviews and that, he just be him all the time and, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of respect for Dylan White. I remember watching your um, your Instagram story a couple of weeks ago, you was at the pub. And he was recording a fight for I think it's England versus <laughs> I think it's England versus Sweden. Yeah, my best mate, dude. One of my best mates, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you didn't stand up, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't stand up. I tell you, I was with I was with my mates. I was with me. I was with my mates. They uh, all my mates are like a little gang. They call themselves the uh, the brigade. Uh. They call themselves the brigade, and they were down the pub, and uh, I was I, 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 I was I was sitting right at the back of it, and I. I can't get in, I can't get involved in nothing like that, and I'm very fortunate. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I never laughed like that in my life. Do you know what? It was actually probably one of the most hilarious stories I've seen on Instagram for a long time. And you could both tell their footprints. Oh, they were both, yeah, they were both gone. The other, the other fellow, I don't know who the other fellow was, with my mate Joe. And then they all, after they all started getting involved, you had them all jump involved with my other mate. You didn't get involved, did you? No, of course not. I have to, I have to sit back and I have to, I have to watch it. I sit back and watch it in my so heart. I'll tell you, rather I, than I being was a sitting back. Samaritan and stopping it, you decided to record it. I recorded it. <laughs> you know what it is? My heart was in my mouth. My heart was in my mouth. I'm standing, I was standing there with their girlfriends. But yeah, no. Um, 
Yeah. That's not good. I don't like seeing that. It was just watching. We obviously, we obviously know Britain, British boxing is at a good, um, is at a good point right now. What do you make of England in the World Cup? I'm brilliant. Hey, I'm brilliant. I, I, they did do really well, but I do think oh, I'm slightly. They could, have, they should have beat Croatia. I think. I think they're good enough to beat Croatia. And I think. Um, I think this was their best opportunity that they were going to get in a long time because it literally, like the draw, played in England's looked favorite. like it all. Just everything just seemed to be playing out know, in their favour. Do you know when I look at you know before the Croatia game, I said to someone that their midfield, their midfield free of Kovacic, Modric, Rakitic, and obviously Brozovic, I think started instead of Kovacic. That's three world class players. England only had one in Harry Kane, and I said that would be the factor in the game yeah. and I sort of knew I sort of saw Croatia once they scored I knew they'd go on and win it. Yeah. But I mean yeah, I, I know you're saying missed opportunity but come on surely you've got yeah, to look they're at good so Croatia are, Croatia are a good team but I think a semi final yeah. for a manager that's you know well, not really game. Yeah, yeah and a team that's got not much world class players in it. And obviously I was Yeah no you are right. You 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 are right but I do think Do you know I think they they're great. Listen, Croatia are a great team, okay. and, they, and they done that. But England done brilliant to get to the semi-final. But I suppose that's just a greed in me. I want more. Yeah. I want it more. I, I, I honestly thought, I thought they can get to the final. I didn't think they were going to beat France. I never thought they were going to beat yeah, France. I, I picked France at the beginning. Yeah. France and Brazil, but France. I never, I never, I never, I never picked them to beat France. Yeah. But I thought they'd have done you, so well. For you've got to give credit to the team because, you know, I'm, I'm 28 years old. I don't really remember Euro 96, I don't remember Italian 90, but ever, ever since that it's just been negativity, negativity, you know, with the England teams. You've got to, uh, at least once we can say in our lifetime, we've actually enjoyed an international tournament. Yeah. Watching England. No, done really, really, done really well. Too. You'll never forget it really, would you? Because the, the weather's been beautiful. Yeah. The, England got to the semi-final. This is probably a summer that you'll never forget. Oh, I'm a professional debut. Exactly. Exactly. I don't think anyone's going to ever forget 2018 no, summer. No, I don't think they will. I've, had, I've, <laughs> I've not really had the greatest of years, but in terms of sports-wise, it's been good. No, 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 I think, I think sport-wise in England, I think it's in the um, UK, mm -hmm. it's absolutely booming. British boxing's booming, football's doing well. Yeah. You look at the football, you look at the football, do more, I think they'll do I think everything's going good. Yeah, I mean, but we're... Well, obviously Pakistan come down to beat England in the cricket and you know we Oh yeah but, but it's, it's, happens, it? British sport is at such a good place right now. Yeah, no, he's 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 at a, he's at it's booming. Sport in, in not only just boxing, he's booming the football booming there now. You just you just gotta think there now that all, all them England players like had their stock yeah, for the, for themselves and for England football and the Premier League and that has gone up massively. Anything else you want to add? Oh, thanks for your time. Thanks no, for no, no. thanks for your Thank you thanks for your support for coming down. I'm, I'm one of the first people, people to interview me before my um my pro debut. Now, and Listen, I appreciate I'm, that. I'm handing you my bank details off this. You're putting in a couple of hundred quid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm no, only joking. No, honestly, listen. Thank you for coming down here. Yeah. No, thank you. And um, I just want to say, I've got, obviously, I'd just like to say a, a shout out to my sponsors. Um, Auto trading so I couldn't live without them and plan and plan car leasing. They, they helped me live and, and help me live my dream as a professional boxer. Yeah. Shout out to my mum and my dad and shout out to the uh, shout out to the boys, the brigade. <laughs> if you want to see the brigade in action, just add James on yeah, Instagram. Me, and I'll send it over Follow to him. And see, it, it, see my mate Joey over the terror. <laughs> No, I might actually send you, ask you to let me put that on my channel, do you know that? Oh, mate, it's so fun. <laughs> All right, listen, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. I'll let you carry on. Yeah, You've probably you got much. somewhere thank to be. Yeah, I'm going to go and do a bit more training. When are we catching up next? Whenever you want. I'll you be down me. here tomorrow. I'll let you know our training went. James Rudd, <laughs> thank you for talking to Liza. Thank you, cheers.